Conrad, you been on uh, Facebook recently? Oh, a little bit, Guy. It's one of the things about Facebook is that anyone can publish anything they want. That's why it's my go-to source for political information. Or for great legal marketing insights. Ah, well, I wouldn't go that far, but uh, tell me about that. Well, I definitely wouldn't go that far. So I let me go back and kind of lay a little story for the listeners. Guy and I have known each other for a very, very long time. I, he is someone that I refer clients to. He refers prospective clients to me when we have a conflict. And I've known his work as well as who he is. And so when he asked me to come on the pod, I was super, super excited, partly because of the friendship and partly because he knows his stuff. Anyway, I Shucks. ran into Guy on Facebook this week. After posting a post about a lawyer who approached me to look at their SEO problems, they've basically gone from somewhere between seven and 800 sessions a day down to about three. And the lawyer told me that their agency told them that they basically just need to continue blogging. More content. So I asked them, well, I didn't ask them. I, told, I showed them how many pages of content they have, which is somewhere between 800 and 900 pages of content. So I was like, what is the additional content going to be? Anyway, I was exasperated by this. I get annoyed with agencies kind of voicing out this really, really poor advice that's really just a cop-out, frankly. So I posted the Google Analytics shot of this firm's traffic to Let's Talk Legal Marketing, which is a Facebook group. And I said, hey, the agency uh, that these guys are working with just tells them that they need to blog more and it'll get better. And the key for me was there were 42 comments on this thread. 41 of them had no idea what they were talking about. And they, and they really basically said in a what I will call an aggressively obnoxious fashion that I didn't know what I was talking about because these guys really should continue blogging, right? Would you call it assertively ignorant? I would call it assertively obnoxiously ignorant. The key here is, and you guys don't need to understand how this works, but basically you can take a Google Analytics search picture, overlay it with Google uh, Core Updates, and, and you can identify immediately when you have a massive drop in traffic. This is like the basic 101 of doing SEO, like absolute bare bones basic. The only person who knew the answer to this right away was Guy, right? Well, that's very nice of you. Um, so I think the moral of the story here is don't get your political news or SEO <laughs> for lawyers news from Facebook groups alone. Know your source. Because everyone's an expert. In politics and in SEO. So what we got on tap today, Conrad? So today we're going back to by the numbers. That is one of the segments that you introduce. I love it. So we're going back to by the numbers. We're going to do a quick recap of what you and I have decided to do with Market That Podcast. And then we have a special guest, Guy. Would you like to intro our special guest? I would love to intro our special guest, but I'm going to keep it a surprise. You're going to make people listen? That is, a, yep. that is a cheap podcast hook, dude. Yep. I've been reading podcasts for dummies. <laughs> yeah. Leave them to something that's going to be great, but just, you know, don't open the curtain just yet. Mr. Lockwood, hit it. Money makes a world and welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing, teaching you how to promote, market, and make fat stacks for your legal practice. Here on Legal Talk Network. Yeah. Welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Before we get started, we wanted to say a special thanks to our new sponsor, LawYaw. LawYaw provides end-to-end -end document automation for solo, small, and mid-sized practices. Save time and avoid mistakes with documents that you draft over and over and over and over again. Learn more at lawyaw.com. That's L-A-W-Y-A-W.com. Thanks also to Alert Communications for sponsoring this episode. If any law firm is looking for call, intake, or retainer services available 24-7, 365, just call 866-827-5568. And also LexisNexis Interaction, the leading client relationship management solution purpose-built for the way law firms engage with their clients. Learn more at interaction.com. All right, let's get to the numbers. All right, Guy, we're going to talk about a really important number that both of us have access to for all of our clients and many of you guys don't even look at. That number 
is 91%. And it represents, Guy? The percentage of phone calls that are answered by our clients. So Guy and I looked at all of our clients across the board, and there is an interesting grouping of how this works. But basically, this means, on average, you guys miss 9% of the calls that come into your, your firm. Another way to think about that is you could improve your marketing by 5% just by answering more phone calls, right? Right. And my, my hunch is, is that our number is actually high uh, in terms of response because we do, I know you and I know uh, our folks spend a lot of time educating and really you know, laying that foundation of how important it is to have a rapid response. So my hunch is for the folks that are listening at home, if you're tracking phone calls, that uh, your response rate might even be lower. And we actually know also from the Clio Legal Trends Report that that's a big source of issue right there. So, and, and if you know, if you're struggling with answering the phone, you know, you might check out an answering service, uh, whether, you know, alert communications or if you just search for call answering services, there's a lot out there. But speed is really, really important in terms of stopping that potential client search for their next lawyer. And I mean, this is a great example of where you can use math to make your practice imminently better. You know, when we looked at the distribution of where these people fell, where, where the firms fell, there was a whole cluster that was answering 97, 98, 99% of the calls. And there were a bunch that were below 80, right? If you're below 80 or 85% of your calls getting answered, you need to fix that problem. Now, Stop you can fix spending that. money. <laughs> Stop spending money on people like us and fix that first. You're pouring right? gasoline into a gas tank that has a hole in the bottom. So stop doing that. that Higher alert. Is that <laughs> thing? I wasn't sure where you were going with your pouring. <laughs> Me neither. I don't pouring know. gas usually goes onto the fire. That's where the well, metaphor I was thinking goes. Like in the car. In the you're car. You're mixing your metaphors, Guy. You're putting more gas in the car, but the car's not running out of gas. Yeah, terrible. And it's on Whatever. fire. It's a tough day. Okay, <laughs> it is a tough day, but that is really, really important. And hey, Guy, where can I find this number for my own firm? Well, if you're working with an agency, then you should be asking them. But if you're using, we, I like CallRail. CallRail has that. Um, I think most of the major call answering services will report on call answers, missed calls. Um, but I think to me, I like the technological solution. I like CallRail, Invoca. There are a couple other call tracking uh, services that I might take a look at. So get this dialed in. And I'll give you another thing. And this is you know important. Just because you have an answering service doesn't mean they're answering the phone. So. Right. Uh, it's good to have an independent check on that for sure. Check that because shop your firm, shop your firm and be very, very careful with that because it can be very, very valuable. But if they're missing that one part, which is their only job, that can be a problem. So purchase that carefully. Right. So if you're listening, please go uh, review us good, bad or otherwise, preferably on Apple podcasts, but otherwise you can tweet at us, hashtag LHLM, uh, but let us know. We got to know it's the only way we get better and it's the only way that we can look at ourselves in the mirror and feel good about ourselves. <laughs> so while we're talking about marketing ourselves, which we were just marketing in the podcast by asking for a review, which by the way, you should all be doing for your law firm. You know this, but you need to be told again and again because it's an awkward thing to do. We're going to go back to talking about marketing that podcast. So we're going to do kind of marketer to marketer, marketer versus marketer for marketing this marketing podcast. Marketing the marketing marketing? We're going to market the market market. So Guy, can you talk about what we're going to do to share how we market the podcast and how that may actually apply to a law firm? Sure. So the, you know, as folks that have been listening, we went through the rebranding kind of concept and decided that uh, we're going to do this contest. So Conrad and I are going to compete to try to drive more subscribers, uh, more listeners to the podcast. You know, that's a metric that we would use to to measure the effectiveness of the podcast. You know, in the context of your firm, or if you you know if you have your own podcast, this will be 
extremely contextually relevant for you, but uh, in the context of a law firm that's trying to market themselves online, you know, it all starts with identifying those key performance business metrics. So if it's going to be a target cost per client, if it's going to be a return on investment or a return on ad spend for a campaign, uh, a target cost per qualified lead, that's really the starting point. And, and figuring out the business metrics behind that, how much can you spend to get a new new client, essentially? Yeah. And our new client is basically someone listening. We're, we're working within the construct of what we can actually track. So this becomes important. I would say, Guy, do you have any clients who don't, who run a lot of advertising without really good tracking? Um, we have some of that. I wish that they would improve it. Um, right. but, but yeah, it's, it's, to Conrad's point, it's really, really important that you have that tracking infrastructure in place. You have attribution in place or else, you know, back to my awesome example of pouring gas into a holy uh, <laughs> gas tank, um, you're not going to be able to really know how effective your dollars are spent and, and what it's producing for you in terms of a business metric. You know, and this is the issue. And this is, you know, back to that, uh, you know, that healthy skepticism that Conrad has in calling out other agencies and other uh, marketing people. You better ask these questions and set those success metrics, business success metrics up in advance before you start spending money or else you're going to be chasing your tail. And you also need to know the limitations of your conversion tracking, right? So the legal industry as a whole is getting better to being able to track a client back to a specific marketing tactic. And in many cases, it's many marketing tactics because it's a multi-touch situation. I would encourage you as firms to go for as far down that path as you possibly can. And if it means that you spend a bunch of time with Excel spreadsheets that you pulled out of needles and trying to match those up to your call rail data, Take the time to do that because many of you are still burning half of your money. And if you don't know which half you're burning, you're powerless, right? And, right. and, and we're at a point where we can answer some of these questions. So for us, we're going to be running completely blind tests. Guy's going to do a bunch of things by marketing channel and creative. I'm going to do a bunch of things by marketing channel and creative. And one of the benefits of doing that is we're going to come up with very, very different ways. Hopefully, we'll come up with very, very different ways to market the podcast. And the value in doing things that are very, very different, both in terms of the channels that you utilize as well as the creative that you put on those channels, is you can have a matrix of marketing creative, marketing channel, and find out if we try four or five different things along both of those axes, you have 25 different combinations where you can cherry pick the ones that are working the best and iterate from there, as opposed to doing things that are fundamentally similar or only doing one thing at a time, which is crazy because then you're not learning anything. You're just doing a thing. Right. And we'll take you through, we'll walk you through what we do and what the results are as, as the contest uh, develops. But just to so have a sense for those that are already starting to think about how they might implement some of this stuff at their own firm, you know, it's going to be things like using UTM parameters to track clicks from Facebook, from, you know, paid ads, from email signatures, uh, just as one example. And again, that's a by using those UTM parameters online, you can test things down to the ad copy, the creative imagery that you're using. And so, and of course, we will also be tagging it from an attribution standpoint with our names so that we know that X campaign generated, you know, Guy did this awesome stuff and Conrad did this not as awesome stuff. Right. Conrad fell on his face. Yeah, right. While we're talking about competition, we ended the last podcast with a preview to an argument that we need to have. The argument was, should a law firm's intake ask, how did you find us? And I have hated this question for a very, very long time, and Guy wants to defend it. So the reasoning I hate this is very simple, and it's twofold. One, it's massively inaccurate. It usually sounds something like the internet. And if you rely on Bill, your front desk guy, to fill in a square somewhere that says the internet, he just explained to you in terms of testing and understanding and having UTM codes, you lose all of that because you think the answer is the internet. The other reason I hate it is it's super invasive. I just walked in on my spouse with the pool boy and I call a divorce lawyer. And the first thing that they ask me is, was that a, were you on Avo when you found us? And was that an ad on Avo and whose profile? What? Like, don't have that conversation. It's obnoxious. So, but Guy, I want to go back to, and there is one question. So let me caveat, we'll come back to the one question that I do think you should ask. But Guy, why do you think 
you should continue to ask that very obnoxious, super inaccurate question. So this, uh, that was very loaded. Um, so <laughs> we're actually not going to fight about this as much as you might have hoped. So my thing is, is yeah, it is completely unreliable. And when you ask, it makes a big difference. But if you do it at the right time and you don't rely on it, and it's in addition to your attribution systems, it's very valuable because, as you mentioned, Conrad, there are limitations with your attribution. And so I think a lot of businesses, advertisers, and lawyers get into this attribution into a box. And so let me give you the most obvious example. Someone in someone's family dealing with some legal issue, they do a search, they see your ad, they search your name, they see a TV ad, there's some offline, and then they refer that to the person in their family. And it comes in and your attribution is totally broken. There is no attribution because they literally just came in or maybe they maybe they ended up searching your name and clicked your ad and you're giving credit to your paid search ad when really it was your TV creative. And so by asking the question, you can fill in some of those gaps. All the things you said, I think are legit. So I, I'm, a, I'm not a don't do attribution, just ask. And I'm certainly the, the timing and the art and the when and the how you ask the question is really important. But at the end of the day, I think it is, it's still useful to have that on your intake form. Before we go to break, I want to make one point. Ask about referrals. Did someone refer you to us? Because that's something that no amount of marketing awesomeness can capture. And it's super important. And you should put a bottle of wine in the mail to whomever just sent you that referral. So with that, we're going to take a break. No one cites routine drafting as the reason they chose to become a lawyer, but that's where a lot of time goes for solo practitioners and small firms. LawYaw can help you transform your existing Word documents into reusable templates with no coding required. Save time and avoid errors with intuitive features like conditional logic. Use a tool that empowers your experience and expertise. Learn more at LawYaw.com. That's L-A-W-Y-A-W.com. The right client relationship management solution enables and empowers firm growth. LexisNexis Interaction is designed specifically for law firms and embeds client intelligence at the heart of every interaction, providing valuable insights into client relationships so you can make strategic decisions about how to focus your resources to gain more business. Learn more and request your free demo at interaction.com slash lunch hour. Welcome back. And now I am very excited and honored to welcome a great friend, friend of the podcast, friend to Conrad and I, Jared Korea. Jared, welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Wow. Thank you. I don't know what I can do with that introduction. Very kind of you. I'm glad to be here. This is very relaxing. I know. I'm in a very romantic mood right now. <laughs> and great. so uh, we haven't had a guest, a friend. I don't, we aren't even calling you a guest. We're your friend. <laughs> it's not a guest. No, I think we have Thank to go you. with friend of the pod, right? Friend of the pod. I like that. You're a fop because we want <laughs> you to come back. <laughs> I'll come back. You play me that uh, that Barry White intro, which I wasn't expecting. I'll I'll come on the pod again, definitely. So, Jared, you're here to um, talk about hats. Yes. Um, I have a large hat collection. Can we talk about that? We will, but uh, also, what's going on in your world of legal tech? Right. Yes. Happy to talk about any and all hats, any and all legal tech. And I recently had the honor of being a fop on your podcast. Longtime fop of the podcast. Huge yes. fop, huge <laughs> fopper of Legal Toolkit, which is being retooled. Yes. Yes. As we speak. We've been talking about retooling. Well, we call it rebranding over here. Oh, that's better. I should call it that too. No, I think it's. I think retool for you for tool <laughs> could. <laughs> wow, that's be, that is I better. feel that like I feel like well a played. back backhanded right there. <laughs> yeah, that's all right yeah. though. I'm I'm all already right. over it. Don't worry. Okay. All right. So to, what what is tell us about legal toolkit for the five people who don't know about it? The five. Yeah, my mom is an ardent listener. So legal toolkit is a show on the Legal Talk Network, much like this show on the Legal Talk Network, uh, except we have a little bit of a different focus. We've got to uh, talk about like practice management generally. We cover a lot of ground. And I've, I've actually been doing the show for almost 15 years, believe it or not. And 15 so, years? It's crazy, That's dedication. Right? Okay. It is dedication. Yeah, I, I didn't give up on the podcast format yet. I'm still going strong. And that's a daily show. You do that every day, right? Uh, twice a day. 
twice a day. It's a lot of effort, frankly. <laughs> a lot of episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running out of guests. <laughs> uh, friends. Right, wow. friends. I'm running, running out, out of fops. <laughs> Do you see what just happened? He said, I'm running out of guests, and you were the last person that was on the... You were right. the last on the list, Gabe. Oh, I knew that. Now, I'm, now yeah. I'm fresh out. Like, I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> I knew that. It took 15 years. Right. But, like, I, I will tell you, like, we're talking new territory. I'm not only going to talk about legal tech and legal process management. We're going to talk about some random stuff, too. I'm talking about Tom Petty on my latest podcast. going to talk about music. going to talk about popular culture. It's going to be a whole different direction. So yeah, you I have some games, some games on there. We're games, gonna try to... yes. I played a game with you last time. Yeah, I feel like revenge might be coming my way shortly, but you know, yeah, I totally well, it deserve is. it. With you here, we figured we would do a game as well, just as you're such a big games person. <laughs> Love games. <laughs> you're a games guy. <laughs> yes. Uh, one of the other uh, things that you, you do a lot of uh, education of lawyers, for lawyers, right. Right. of them, for them. Buy them, <laughs> buy them, um, with them. Next with to them. them. Uh, and I and I became a topic that we wanted to talk about today. Is I received a because I'm on one of your uh, webinar mailing lists, which I encourage yeah. people to check out. You put out a lot of good stuff, and Thank you, uh, sir. it was a, a webinar. I don't know if you actually have because I've given my dates crossed here. Who knows? When. It's next week. I can't tell what day. It's next week. Thank you. I don't know what day it is. That's right. Um, you're talking digital client journeys, and so I thought maybe we'd give a little teaser of what that's all about. Yeah. Digital client journeys, which I know you gentlemen know about very well, is what do you do when a new lead comes into your law firm, right? Like most lawyers fall flat on their face into a pile of mud. It's very ugly. And they do a bad job converting leads, right? But if you actually coddle that lead a little bit, hey, they might actually become a client or more people might become clients than you're getting right now. So when we're talking about a client journey, that essentially means like, how does someone travel from a lead to a client. And there's tons of tools out there that can help you to manage that and tons of processes you could implement. But the problem that most lawyers have is they start with like nothing, as I'm sure you know. And I think a lot of the time, Jared, we tend to substitute tools with like, okay, I've now got this thing and it'll do it for me. Right. <laughs> and it's, it's that it never works that way because you're dealing with people, right? It would be fine if you were building slippers or Coca-Cola, but when you're actually dealing with people, it doesn't work that way, right? Right. No, I think that's a good point. Like, I think in my experience, and I've consulted with a bunch of lawyers at this point, is that they want like these problem-solving tools that are going to fix everything for them, right? So they're like, hey, I want this thing to fix everything. And it never works that way because they need to put some kind of effort into it. Like, there's no technology that you can use without thinking about it, right? If you want to leverage it effectively, you actually have to do a little bit of work on the front end. Now, the idea is that you're going to have to do less work on the back end, but there's no point in time where you're going to get into a legal technology, especially because legal tech is less mature than other uh, sectors of technology, and just have something be set in and forget it. And I think lawyers like worry heavily about productivity and they know if they spend time on a new technology tool, they're going to have a little productivity dip before they get the bump back. And that's the biggest challenge for them because they're so hyper-focused on revenue all the time. But you're right. Like you got to work at this a little bit. Yeah. And I would even add one more thing to that. I think that part of that, that whole thinking, that whole mindset about you do this stuff for productivity, like productivity is like a side benefit, but if yeah. you don't do it for the client, right? If you don't do it to make things better for your potential client and you're just focused on your productivity, you run into these things where you, you've got this uh, Kafka-esque. Uh, oh, wow. Yes. Wow. I said it. Wow. I, I put it out there. I did not know we were going to be talking about yes, Kafka. You have I am Ka not prepared. It's a, Ka a Kafka-esque <laughs> digital client journey where, you know, they're stuck in an infinite loop of automations and can't get out and can't talk to anybody and can't. And so I, that's what my, my, I think that's part of, for me, what I see is, is that the, it's a mindset shift to say, you know, look, these tools are here to support providing better service to the client to help them through their journey. But, you know, where you need to step in and, and where you're designing, it's got to be with them in mind or else you, you really create a monster. Well, let me, right. that, There's that chapter in the trial about like online intake, which was really interesting. Sorry, Conrad. No, I no, so I'll, let me, let me yeah. walk right into that. You know, <laughs> we've been talking to lawyers dealing with COVID, trying to do, last, last episode, Guy and I talked about Zoom intakes and stuff like that. Yeah. 
one of the complaints I'm getting from lawyers right now is is the established rainmaker in the firm who is so accustomed to closing the deal in person because she is so <laughs> amazingly enigmatic and interesting. Right. <laughs> and and some clients want that in person, right? And so how do you feel sometimes where we always apply a digital lens to how we are handling intake when for some clients or for some attorneys, it's actually less effective, right? No, I think that makes a lot of sense. And then I think attorneys think it's like an all or nothing proposition, right? Right. And I get this a lot from lawyers. They're like, okay, I'm using technology and I'm, I've lost face to face now, which is how I run my business. But <laughs> you can do two things at once, right? right? And the question is like, when do you engage that personal interaction? So like that attorney who's a really good rainmaker, she's not gonna wanna pick up the phone for like everybody who calls into the law firm, right? You can't do, right. you can't be like, the airline pilot and also going back and handing out the peanuts, right? Somebody's got to be able to do that intake component and get the right people in front of that lawyer or send that lawyer to the right events, right? And depending on how large your firm is, you may have a marketing coordinator that could help you with that. You may have admin people that could help you with that, but you could also use technology. So the idea is talk to the right people so that you can bring your effervescent personality to closing people who are more likely to close. So I think you get people to a point where they have that personal touch point, but right. you do both. You use technology to shepherd them to that point so that you're not talking to everybody, wasting your time, and you're having conversations with the right people, frankly. Don't waste your ammo. Right. And speaking of effervescent personalities, <laughs> I know that you are a tech founder in ah. the chatbot space. Yes. And I think this is one of those areas where, you know, to your point, I'll let you talk about it, but kind of set it up for you is chatbots can do some heavy lifting on the front end, right? So, you know, some basic information collection, start routing you on a path, identify that you're going to be a good client. Um, but talk to us about kind of how do you you move from someone that lands on your website, uh, it wants to engage with a chatbot to the effervescent personality part. When you were talking about effervescent personalities, I thought you were referring to Conrad. So I, was talking that, to you, I was talking about you, but that, I, that set me back a bit. Yeah, but thank then. you. Um, yeah. So in terms of chatbots, um, we have a software company that sells chatbots to law firms. It's called Gideon, and well, like over the last couple of years, we've looked into this issue quite a bit. So I think there's a couple of things that you want to do. One is engagement, and two is getting people to a next step. And this is where attorneys fall down a lot because. I think they assume that legal consumers know more about what lawyers do than they actually know. Like, by and large, legal consumers know very little about what lawyers do. And so there's gotta be some kind of education process. So when somebody's coming to you as a lead, they wanna know, what do you do? Can you help me? And what do I do next? Because I'm clueless as to all these things. Like when I buy a subscription to Disney+, Plus. I know I'm paying like seven bucks a month and I'm getting Disney's entire content library, right? When I go to hire a lawyer, I have no clue what I'm getting. So the way you use a chatbot is you essentially build like a script out of common questions that clients have. They answer those questions and then you tag each of the answers, right? So what you do is you create these labels, you aggregate those labels into classifications, and then you're looking for people to provide the right responses to get them to a person or to a meeting. So for example, if you're like an estate planning attorney, you might wanna know whether somebody owns their own home. You may wanna know whether or not they're married. You may wanna know whether or not they have kids. You may wanna know what their income level is. If you find that out ahead of time, and you don't have to have a conversation with everybody, you can have a conversation with the 20% of people that you should be having conversations with. And so you can get a notification that says, hey, you've got a good lead in this chat bar right now. So now it's on you to follow up. And we've also actually put in an automatic calendaring tool. So somebody who hits the right criteria, they can just schedule a meeting with an attorney. And so Conrad was talking about the personal touch stuff before. Exactly. So get those initial consultations scheduled with only the people who are more likely to sign up as a client and use those conversations to get more conversion. So that's yeah. kind of that's kind of my position on how this all works or should work. No, I love that. And you know, the other side of that coin is is that it's also more efficient for the client, right? So the client doesn't right. have to go back and forth with you on email. The client, you know, a lot of people too, it's just their preference is to engage with something that they could even text, right? So whether it's a chat bot or right. you know, a text to chat. Uh, they don't want to get on the phone if they can avoid it. Or uh, to put it your way, they want to get on the phone with the right person at the right time. And so for right. them, even the chat bot is a, 
a more uh, it's a better experience for them can be a better experience for them too. So it, it's one of those things that works hand in hand, especially for younger clients who prefer messaging. So that's totally right. true. Awesome. Well, uh, Jared, thanks for sharing that. And now we need to take a quick break before we get into our super awesome game segment. As the largest legal-only call center in the U.S., Alert Communications helps law firms and legal marketing agencies with new client intake. Alert captures and responds to all leads 24-7, 365 as an extension of your firm in both English and Spanish. Alert uses proven intake methods, customizing responses as needed, which earns the trust of clients and improves client retention. To find out how Alert can help your law office, call 866 827 5568 or visit alertcommunications.com forward slash LTN. And now it's time for that moment we've all been waiting for our game segment, Becoming the Archetype. So we're not talking about the post grunge Christian rock band. <laughs> From the early aughts here, which I had to learn about, uh, we're talking brand archetypes, uh, specifically the 12 brand archetypes. I believe that psychologist Carl Jung, but essentially it's a profile or, or lack of a better word, an archetype that appeals to the listener through a certain profile. And so we got 12 of them. We've divvied them up. Our producers divvied them up. And so we don't know which of us has which. And we've each crafted a couple lawyer commercials, like little elevator pitches. I don't know if mine's going to be 30 seconds or not. Maybe these guys went longer than I did. And then the other two of us are going to guess which archetype. So the goal here for you as a listener, you're like, why the heck are they doing this? Is <laughs> to be thinking about archetypes in general. So, you know, go Google archetypes, brand archetypes, and see which ones resonate with you. And then to give you some examples of how that exercise might play out, taking what we know about archetypes and trying to apply it to an actual lawyer commercial. So good, bad, and ugly. Here we go. We're gonna turn I'm gonna turn it over to Conrad. If you're following along on Twitter, please do hashtag LHLM to let us know what kind of brand archetypes you're into. And if you get happen to be listening in real time and want to tweet your answers, like we'd love for you to play along. Conrad, lead us I'll off. say like the, the key here is most of you guys, Gee and I've talked about this in different facets, but most of you guys and women are so engaged in convincing people that you're a lawyer that you're missing the who behind that. And brand archetypes are a great guide to thinking beyond the fact that I have leather-bound books and a JD, maybe some scales of justice with a blindfold on, right? You just read uh, my commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. But th this is the whole point of this. And it's a great exercise to think about if your law firm were a brand, would you be Harley Davidson or would you be IBM? Would you be Coke or would you be Red Bull, right? And so thinking about your positioning and messaging outside of I have a law degree is super, super important. So with no further ado, I'm going to go into archetype number one. And you can guess what this might be. So what I would do is go Google brand archetypes, press pause, go Google brand archetypes, because you probably don't know what they are. And then listen to the next four uh, minutes of Conrad and Guy doing our radio commercials and understand what that looks like. You've already heard of Cray and Sakalakis because our reputation precedes us. We've recovered more money than the rest of Michigan's PI lawyers combined. We're six feet seven, 210 pounds of lean lawyer muscle backed by 198 years of combined experience. Harvard educated? Check. Million dollar verdicts? We've had plenty. We don't settle, we fight for even more money than you actually deserve. Why hire DeVito when you can go with Arnold? Metallica instead of Kenny G. The Checkers Club geek when you could have not just a quarterback, but the entire team. At Korean Sakalakis, you get the best, and that's the least you deserve. That was great. Damn, so that was Jared, really good. Jared, who do you, <laughs> which brand archetype do you think it is? I was going to go with homicidal maniac. <laughs> yeah, but that's right. Um, I'm going to do, oh, this is tough. I'm going to do the regular guy. And I'm going to choose the hero. Mm. It is the hero. Damn. That was my second guess. And the yeah. key here, and this is the, the hard thing, a lot of, and I chose PI with the hero specifically because 
everyone in PI tries to be the hero. You all talk about your combined years of experience, the amount of money you've recovered. You all have this marketing focused pissing contest with each other about who's bigger and better and you're missing. And so you all have the same exact message in the market. We have worked really hard with some of our clients to back off of this. Right. And that's, I think that's also the point here is, is that if everybody is speaking through the same archetype, you're not going to stand out as well. Also, I think another misalignment is, is that if that's not you, then you might rethink your archetype, right? If, if, right. Anyway. All right. Jared, you're up. Start with your first jingle. Conrad's was so good. It really I was. Like, I feel I'm, like I'm, I'm a failure too. So don't it's, worry. It's, it's really tough to fall no, down. All right. He's... I got two. One I like and one I don't like. So I'm going to go with the one I like better first. All right. Ready? Yep. I'm Dirk the Hammer Steel. And I'm the criminal attorney you need. Guess what? The pigs hate me too. Why? Because I get more guys off than Jenna Jameson. When you need a lawyer and your ass is on the line, forget Saul, call me. I know the criminal justice system from the inside. I understand that Shawshank doesn't always get a redemption. Call today. Just dial thunder on your keypad. So I, I know this one because this is actually probably like who you are as the archetype as well in me? real life. Yeah. Oh, Wow, okay. And at first I was thinking the lover, but it's not the lover. <laughs> well, thank you. I don't think I'll Jenna Jameson, just because she said Jenna Jameson doesn't it's, go with lover. D- it's, dated, it's, dated porn star reference, so you know how You are that. using <laughs> a <laughs> very, very liberal use of the word love. The there. thoughts and views of this <laughs> podcast are not legal t- talk networks. Um, Can no, we I'm put going... Jenna Jameson in the, uh, in the write-up? I'm going I think with. We need to. I, I'm not getting involved in this conversation, but I will say that I'm choosing the jester archetype. Don't say, Jared Conrad. Who do you? I'm like? going with. I'm going with jester as well. And by the way, this is a great archetype because it is very, very anti-typical lawyer messaging. Right. Better call Saul. Better right. call Saul. Anyone heard of the Texas law hawk? He is the jester in spades. <laughs> oh, I thought he was the hero. <laughs> just kidding okay <laughs> he's the hero to like 12 year old boys I all think, right maybe. My, now now i'm really going because i mine are not nearly as good or creative as you guys are uh but, but hopefully he's, it'll be he's frantically rewriting no i'm not even i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do it it's a lost cause imagine a transformative legal service experience where not only are your legal needs served but your life is forever changed through innovation experience and knowledge We help our clients design the future of their dreams. Come experience an entirely new way of working with your lawyer. All right. Guesses. Conrad, you want to go first? You want me to go first? Well, I was going to go caregiver, but there's kind of also the innocent, especially because like I felt like I wanted to cuddle up to Guy uh, with the tone of his voice. More than usual. You know what? I probably shouldn't have used that. I always feel that that way. I probably shouldn't have used that tone of voice, but whatever. (laughs) Well, it's very soothing. <laughs> yeah, we're not re- re- we're not re-recording that one. It was no. kind of, it was kind of nice. Yes. Um, I'm I'm gonna go with the magician because that sounded to me like a little Disney Imagineering type of pitch. All right, what do you got, Conrad? I'm going with the innocent, right? So safety, looking to the future. It was intended to be the magician. Okay. Yes, yes. Back Who's on the keeping board. score? By the way, hopefully uh, no one. Adam, <laughs> Adam, is, Adam is all right. Conrad, your turn. They're out to get you. Greedy insurance industry lawyers protecting their profit at your cost. It's a money game for them and the game of life for you. Big corporate lawyers from the insurance industry know every dirty trick in the book because that's how they maximize their profit. At Britton & Newton, we used to be those dirty, underhanded lawyers screwing our own clients every day until we couldn't live with ourselves anymore. Bring a gun to the insurance industry knife fight with lawyers who exploit every loophole to make you whole. Interesting one. Jared, thoughts? Damn, Conrad, you are so good at this stuff. Like, it, it I really feel like is. you need a second career in voiceover. I agree. Work. It, is totally. this voiceover um, or, or, yeah. Okay. I, you, could, you could voice over every law firm in the world. <laughs> I would buy their services. <laughs> wow. A product service extension. Bad voiceovers from Conrad. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I, got, I got a guess here, and I think it's the Rebel, and I'll let Guy go. So I had it down to two. I was either the Rebel or the Everyman. I'm guessing Everyman. That was Rebel. Rebel. So, I'm on fire. Nice job. You are on fire. I think you win. So that's actually uh, the brand archetype that we fell in for my agency. We're actually working on a redesign right now to lean mm. closer to the Rebel. You'll remember, 
at the very beginning of this show, we talked about some horrible internet marketing people. And that kind of goes right into my brand archetype of being kind of the rebel and pointing out stuff where people are getting screwed by their agencies. You are the rebel. A little bit. I try. Break the rules. <laughs> Break the rules. All right, Jared, your second one. All right, this one's not as good. All right, ready? Well, you can't start. That's terrible marketing. Let me let me re-intro you. This is, not, this this is, is Jared's, not for my business. I don't this care. This is Jared's <laughs> best. Jared can't help but do the gesture twice. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's actually the worst, but I'm going to... Yeah, this, I think I'm out of my element. So you guys can be the judge. I'm even going to do a female lawyer. So, ready? I'm the mother of invention. My name is Diana Prince, and I'm here to help you turn your best ideas into protected intellectual property. You've carefully brought forth a means to change the world for the better, and I'll enrapture that notion with the coddling it needs. Ideas are fragile. They require molding. I'll help you navigate the pathway to protecting what you've built, and joy will spark around you. Very good. Conrad, who do you like? I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm being impacted by both the uh, mellifluous tone of Jared's voice <laughs> and the former Jenna Jameson reference, and I'm going to go with the lover. Okay. I am going to go, I had it down to two. I had it down to the creator and the caregiver, but I'm going with the caregiver. Ah, uh, the lover. The lover! That's the, that's the best I could do. That was good. Not super smooth. You're lover. That was Jared giving you the lover voice. That was his lover <laughs> that's voice. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's how you knew. That's how you knew it. <laughs> All right. My turn. Last one. Our clients rely on us to bring order to the chaos. They bestow us with a sacred trust to lead them to resolution. With us at the helm, they sleep soundly knowing that they are in solid hands with best-in-class security and a reputation as the preeminent leaders in our field, we deliver prosperity and stability in an uncertain world. And by the way, this is, I think this is my archetype in real life, but um, go ahead. Yeah. This is the ruler. This is control and order, and you are in good. This is the all-state version. Well, the all-state is kind of a caregiver. This is the ruler, right? You're in control, and you don't have things to worry about anymore. I'm going in a different direction. Really? really? Guy's love for documentaries about gurus. I'm going to say this is the sage. <laughs> uh, well, I could see that, but it was actually, Conrad nailed it. It was oh. the ruler. Thinking too much about that one. The Dang. Ruler. I, you know, actually, I maybe identify more as the sage, but in any event. Well, that was a lot of fun. Uh, tallying up the votes, uh, nobody wins. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loses. Except for our <laughs> listeners. Wait, are we still talking about the game or last night's election? <laughs> Oh, too soon. <laughs> too soon. It's, it is not, it's, it's not last way, night for our listeners, by yeah, the way. It's <laughs> literally too soon because we're recording this the morning after. So anyway, that was too soon. We may have to edit that out. <laughs> well, that was a lot of fun. Jared, thank you again so much for your effervescent personality <laughs> and deep knowledge and jest. Yes, Jest. And mirth. Lots of jest. And, mir and lots oh, of mirth. mirth. So, yeah. so much mirth. Mirth should be its own archetype. Jester. Yes. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. That sounds like a backhanded compliment, but I'm taking it well. No, it was a forehand. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again to Jared, and thank you, listeners. We really appreciate you indulging us through that fun little exercise. As always, if you just stumbled on Lunch Hour Legal Marketing, please do hit that subscribe button on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or where else you might be casting your pods. Thanks again. Until next time, Conrad, Guy, and Jared are out. Thank you for listening to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. If you'd like more information about what you heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via Apple Podcasts and RSS. Follow Legal Talk Network on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And or download the free app from Legal Talk Network in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, or subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. 
as always, consult a lawyer. Casting your pods? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'd say. You Cast sound your like pods with your friends of the pod. <laughs> you, you sound like, like doing you were the up laundry. all night. Cast it's like a Tide pod. pod. <laughs> you got to cop your fop. <laughs> Gee, can you record like yourself reading stories to me so I can go to sleep? You have like a very smooth <laughs> podcast voice. I really Thank enjoy you. it. Thank you. Appreciate that. I think you as well have a very rich podcast voice. <laughs> <laughs> this is like some ASMR shit going on right now. 